good evening. Hello, thank you for coming out. Um, let's be fair here, kick us off some honesty. I am shiting myself. <laughs> Actually, more accurately, my arsehole is puckered tighter than a snare drum. I'm a drummer, so I know what that means. So, anybody got coal last year uh, for Christmas and wants a diamond this year, feel free to follow. Right. Uh, I did what all scared little boys do in these situations, so I, I brought my mummy with me. <laughs> because my mummy thinks I'm special. <laughs> uh, and I brought my dad as well, but that's not really for the support, that's so someone buys me a drink after him. Because <laughs> my dad's a typical Glasgow guy, you know. You know, six months time we'll be having a conversation about this, and he'll tell me go, remember that gig at the stand? And I'll be like, yeah. And he'll go, oh, it's no bad. It's no bad. <laughs> and maybe two years' time, I'll get a pat on the shoulder or a tip of the hat or a handshake or something, you know. Because that's the way we describe things as men in Glasgow, you know. It's, it's, it's either it's shite or it's no bad. You know what I mean? There's no middle ground. It's just the way we do it. Because it's, it's really hard to compliment each other as men in Glasgow. You see your pal comes in the street, you know, he's dressed to the nines, you know, suit tie, whole routine, polished shoes, and you go, hey mate, you're looking great. It's the first thing he says. Fuck Sam, what do you mean? <laughs> you fancy me or something? No, I, no, no I, I, let's rewind. Okay, here he comes on the street again. He's suit the tie, whole routine. And so what do you say? Quarter of wedding. Uh, exactly. Because what I've done is I've managed to take the compliment for actually being presentable and turn it into like a, a thing where I don't actually want to touch a groin. That's, that's, that's basically what I've done there. And that's, that's, that's how we talk to each other as Glasgow people, you know what I mean? So that's where it comes from. Everything's no bad, but it's shite. You see the new Terminator film? Oh, it was pure shite! Oh, it was unbelievable, it was ridiculous! Scotland won 4 0 at Hamden! Aye, it was no bad, aye. Was bad. You see, I blame the weather for that, I really do, because it's hard to be excited about anything when you're getting constant buckets of water tipped on you from a high height. You know what I mean? You can't get overexcited about anything. And that's just, uh, you know, it's just, it's just the way you got to think about things. Because it rains a lot in this country, it does. I've lived here for 33 years, you know what I mean? And it, it, it rains constantly. You know, it's why we're the country that made Noah's Ark look like a, a story that was written by a young boy, you know? You know, an eight-year-old boy. And all the animals go on the big boat to escape the bad water that was made from 40 days and 40 nights. 40 days and 40 nights, really. Come and visit us in February between, you know, February to May. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just ridiculous. There's no way that's possible to happen. Uh, it, rains, it rains all the time. Uh, <laughs> I've kind of lost my thoughts right now. I don't know what happens. I, I get a wee bit more excited. I can't, I can't really be Scottish. You know, it's very difficult. But, you know, I, I, it's one of, the, one of the great things about being a Scottish guy, though, is trying not to instill that in your kids, you know, that same kind of idea. Because, I mean, there's not much I can teach my son right now, because he's only two. You know, he's essentially just a mobile potato. <laughs> you know, he doesn't talk, then, you know, just constantly on. Yeah, he, you know what he ran into me of? He looks like the guy who drank too much at the start of Stag do. You know what I mean? And now we're in, he's unsteady on his feet. <laughs> Possibly dribbling. <laughs> uh, random outbursts of gibberish. Are you the Aye, aye, Mark, aye, that's, uh, it's, it's been great so far, aye. <laughs> and the whole time you're falling about going, is he just shot himself? <laughs> you know, mental. <laughs> and so that's the way you have to run it with your kids, but I've got to be really careful with what I teach my own kids, you know, because I've got daughters as well. And uh, my daughter Beth, you know, she's sitting in the, the harvester, she's colouring a wee placemat, she's got a wee blue crayon. You know, the the placemats to give them the crayons to keep them entertained. You know, and uh, basically, she's sitting there scribbling away. Well, well, they get your order wrong, they give the kids something to do. <laughs> so anyway, blue crayon, she looks at it. Cupped it. Straight down. <laughs> I went, okay, what have I been teaching this kid? So I said to her, put hand there. She goes, well, I wanted to see what blue tasted like. <laughs> and now I'm sitting here going, have I told this kid you can taste colours? <laughs> oh, she already got the yellow, red and green one when I wasn't looking. <laughs> anyway, the way that we describe things, if it was no bad or it was shite, it's up to you guys. But thanks very much. I've been Lenny Hastings. <laughs>